Welcome to the UP Mathematics Club Math 23 Review Slides. Here, we will be discussing triple integrals. So as a refresher for double integrals, you have this general format, and then f of x, y, dA. So for triple integrals, it's the same thing, just a, with a bit more added stuff. So we have three integral symbols over a solid g, and then some function f, dv, where dv is now dx, dy, dz. dA before was just dx, dy, but now dv is dx, dy, dz. So you, are got, you guys are going to have to recall your 3D, 3D surfaces from previous topic, from previous courses in math. So this is read as the triple integral over the solid G of f dv. That's how you read it. And triple integrals are very useful. They're very important because we don't live in a 2D world. We live in a 3D world. So we can use triple integrals to find the mass of real objects. We just have to require that this f here is a density function. And to perform a triple integral, it's sim somewhat similar to a double integral. You set the boundaries, except this time there are three sets of boundaries. And then you do the iterative integral. In double integrals, you only do two integrals. In this one, you do three because it's a triple integral. So that's your introduction to triple integrals. Let's do a few problems. So problem one, where we have to evaluate the triple integral over the solid G of xy sine yz dv, where G is this solid given below. So before we go and actually try to solve this problem, I'll give you some time to pause this video and maybe you can either think about it or try to solve it. Okay, so where do we begin? Well, first, let's identify that our density function rho from earlier is xy sine yz. Just that we remember what we're doing. We're getting, this is going to be the mass of some object. Next, let's note that all of these bounds in G, all of these bounds are constants. 0, pi, 0, 1, 0, and pi over 6. They're all constants. So earlier, when I said that sometimes dv or dx, dy, dz can be in any order. This is one of those cases where it can be in any order because the, con the bounds are constants. If the bounds weren't constants, we'd have to choose an order and we wouldn't be able to change the order. Okay, that's because of Fubini's theorem. So let's move on to the solution. Now, there's actually a lot of orders for this. But the one that we'll be using for this one is dx, dz, then dy. That's because x is actually the simplest to evaluate because it's just outside the sign and we don't need to do any substitution. Unlike with z, we'd have to do a substitution to evaluate z. And y is the most complicated to evaluate because it's both inside the sign and outside. If we wanted to evaluate y right away, we'd have to do some sort of integration by parts. And we want to avoid that if we can. So we do x first, then z, then y. So integrating with respect to x, we just have to integrate x and put all the var other variables as constants. So this y sine yz is a constant, as you'll see here. We integrate x, we get x squared over 2, and y sine yz remains constant. Now we evaluate at, now we evaluate at the bounds 0 and pi. So when x equals 0, this just cancels out. But when x equals pi, we get pi squared y sine yz over 2. As you'll see here, it cancels out pi squared y sine yz. Next, we can now do an integral with respect to z. But if you look at the sign, it has yz inside. Thankfully, we can treat y as a constant because we are integrating with respect to z. But in order to do this, we have to have a substitution which will be u is equal to yz. If we differentiate both sides, then we get du is equal to y dz. So let's look at our integrand. Sine of yz, that just becomes sine u. 
And then these two terms I underlined here, note that they're just equal to this thing. So that's where our du comes from. So we actually get sine u du, which is pretty simple. So we can't obviously predict this without doing the integral, but it's sort of a nice side effect of choosing z before y. We also have to change the boundaries. When, when y is equal to 0, when, when z is equal to 0, u is just also equal to 0. But when z is equal to pi over 6, u is equal to z times is equal to y times pi over 6 or pi over 6 times y. So that's why we get this. So we get remember we get sine u from sine yz and we get du from y dz. So now we just have to integrate sine of u, which is just negative cosine of u and evaluate it at pi y over 6 and 0, like so. So cosine of pi y over 6, we can't really evaluate it, so we'll just leave it as is. But cosine of 0, we can always evaluate that as 1. So it becomes negative cosine pi over 6 y plus 1 because of the two negatives. So now we're at our final integral. And to speed things up, we won't show the substitution here, but in order to do this cosine, you have to do this substitution. And if you do, you should get something like this. Negative 6 over pi. The negative is already there. The 6 over pi is from the substitution. Sine pi over 6y. That's the, just the integral of cosine. And this one just becomes y. Now we just have to evaluate this at 0 and 1. But note that if y is equal to 0, then this whole thing just zeroes out because sine of 0 is 0. And then y, when you, when you have y equals 0, this is also just 0. So they both cancel out if it's 0. So we just have to evaluate it at y equals 1. So we should get pi squared over 2 times negative 6 over pi sine of pi over 6 plus 1. And do we get that? Yes, we do. Remember that sine of pi over 6 is actually 1 half. So simplifying this expression, we get the answer, pi squared over 2 minus 3 pi over 2. So the big takeaway here is that you can use Covini's theorem to evaluate um, to evaluate integrals in any order as long as the bounds on the solid are all constants. And you, you better make use of that to your, to your advantage because it can really help simplify the evaluation. So now let's move on to problem two, which is evaluate the triple integral over G of Y dV, where G is the solid bounded by the parabolic cylinder, Y equals X squared and the planes Y plus Z equals four and z is equal to zero. Again, I'll give you guys a little time to pause the video. And let's move on. So there's actually three parts to this problem. First is drawing g, and then next is determining the bounds from your drawing. And finally, it's actually solving the integral. So first we have to draw g. So let's start with drawing the parabolic cylinder. Let me also draw a negative x-axis. It's not that straight, but that's fine. Plus z plus y. So in order to draw this parabolic cylinder, y is equal to x squared, we can just, we know that this is a parabola, of course. So we can just draw a parabola here. And note that even if you change the z coordinate, it should still be the same parabola because it's a cylinder. So then we can just connect these two surfaces. And that's our parabolic cylinder. What about the plane y plus z equals 4? Well, if you look at the yz plane, 
5 plus z equals 4 is just this line over here. And then we do the same idea with the cylinder, except we draw this line in some other place, but we shift it with respect to x, and then we can draw this plane. We just have to extend it in both directions. Oh wait, actually, let me use a red pen. <laughs> I can see how it gets confusing. So, okay, so this might not be a very clear drawing, but the space under our plane and at the back of the cylinder, within the cylinder, that's what we're supposed to be integrating. Now, thankfully for you guys, you don't have to settle for my drawing because we've actually prepared a figure here. So, again, under the plane and within this cylinder. I just drew it so that you guys would have an idea of how we constructed this, but of course this is gonna be a lot more accurate to the real thing. So now we have the drawing, so we need the bounds. We need the bounds for, we need the bounds for X, y and z so we can take this solid in three different ways right we can take it as a type x y a type y z or a type x z for this one it's pretty clear that we have to take it as a type x z because its x z projection is more or less like flat it's actually one of the faces of the of the surface so let's look at its xz projection. Let me trace it out here. Um, so it's this sort of cup shape. So let me draw that here. Okay. So we need to find the intersection points in order to determine what are the bounds of this area, right? Because these are these are essentially this is the x bound, and this is and these are the y bounds. This line up here and then this thing, this curve. So first, we need to find the points of intersection. So the point of this point of intersection is between y equals x squared, our cylinder, and then this line here. But this line is just a projection of the plane y plus z equals 4 onto this onto the xy plane now remember on this light blue axis z is equal to 0 so our y plus z equals 4 is just y equals 4 and so y equals 4 is this line over here and again this curve over here is y is equal to x squared now we can either do horizontal rectangles or vertical, but it's actually simpler, simpler if we do vertical rectangles here. So that means that we have constant x bounds, but we have to find out what the y bounds are first. So our y bounds, you have at the top y equals four. So that means that our y is less than four. And at the bottom, you have x squared. So that means our y is greater than or equal to x squared. What about our x? Well, our x is here at these intersection points. So we need the intersection of y equals 4 and y equals x squared. So you just get 4 equals x squared and you have two solutions to that. x is equal to positive 2 and x is equal to negative 2. So we can see that our x is in between negative 2 and 2. Finally, for z, we now move back to this figure over here. Let me erase this. So, so in terms of z, we actually have this is actually pretty simple too. Our top boundary, our upper boundary, is this dark blue 
plane, while the lower boundary is this light blue plane. So, in other words, our lower boundary is z is equal to 0, this light blue plane, and our upper boundary is y plus z equals 4. Now this one, you can just be left as is, and you can write z is greater than or equal to 0. But for the dark blue plane, we just we have to transform this into a form where it's z equals something. So we do that by transposing the y, and then we get z is equal to 4 minus y. So again, y is bounded on the top by 4 and on the bottom by x squared. z is bounded on the top by 4 minus y, and on the bottom by 0, and x is just in between negative 2 and 2. So if we write this down as a triple integral, we get this. Now, dz dy dx. This comes from the fact that we use the type xy region, and then we use vertical rectangles. So to make that clear, wait, to make that clear, dz comes from the type xy. In type xy, in general, we have dz dA as our integration. And then as for the d, what the dA is, because we use vertical rectangles, vertical, we have dy dx. So that's why the order is dz dy dx. And now, the boundaries are not constant, so unlike in problem 1, we can't interchange them freely. So now we've done two parts of this problem, as I said earlier. We drew the surface, and now we have the bounds. We just have to do the integration, and we're done. The computation is pretty tedious, but relative to everything else, it's actually straightforward. So I'll just be going through this a bit quicker than with the past two. We integrate this with respect to z, so a z comes up, and then we evaluate that to bounds, so we get y times the quantity 4 minus y. Now we integrate this again with respect to y, 4y minus y squared, we integrate that, and we get 2y squared minus y cubed over 3. Then we substitute for an x squared, so we get 32, and then we get 64 over 3, that's for the 4. And then we get 2x to the 4th minus x, x to the 6 over 3. That's for x squared. And this is a bit tedious to calculate, but it can be simplified by noting that all of these functions are even. In other words, if you replace x with negative x, the answer is still the same. So instead of doing the integral from negative 2 to 2, you can just write 2 times the integral from 0 to 2. Since there's three terms, doing this one will make you do six calculations, one for each, three for each of the bounds. But in this one, you just have to do three calculations and then multiply it by two. So that's four. So it's somewhat faster to just do this. But remember, you can only do that if the integrand is um, even. So we'll do that. We'll integrate. Do this. Now, these slides didn't do what I said, but it's just an uh, extra tip for you guys. And we'll get, we should get 1024 over 35. Again, it's a bit tedious to calculate this, but I'd say that the more important thing to take, o take away from this is not the calculation of the integral, but how to set up the solid and how to set up the bound.